I don't do headphones, I replied. I know, mailed the viewer, but I want to know how well the Companion 1 sounds as home deck. Fair enough, so by popular demand, the Celsius Sound Companion 1. The Celsius Audio Companion 1 is a portable deck and headphone amp, like the Cord Mojo, that is about the same price. That's why the viewer wanted me to review this deck headphone amp as well. But apart from the price and an other similarity I will mention further down, they couldn't have been more different. The Companion 1 looks like a somewhat thicker smartphone with its Gorilla Glass front and back and aluminium bezel that holds a large number of small buttons and connectors. So what's that second similarity? They both have well known designers. Cord has Rob Watts, that is responsible for the WTA filters and the Companion 1 has Jason Lim that used to design at Nuforce. Good designers often have their signature incorporated in their designs and the Companion 1 has some similarities to the Nuforce MicroDAC 3, like the low noise floor and the slight roll off at 20 kHz, only 0.3 dB, so inaudible. The MicroDAC 3 is a simpler DAC with more limitations, but if you want to view the review, the link is in the top right corner. I also included a link to the Mojo. Apart from the portability and a Wi-Fi connection, on which later more, it also does 32 bits 384 kHz PCM and DSD 64 and 128. The second input is USB 2 according to USB Audio Profile 2 specs, meaning it can do all the sampling rates driverless on all devices but those with a Windows operating system. But a driver for Windows is available. This means that also iOS and Android devices are supported. It even comes with cables for iOS, both the 30 pin and Lightning and Android OTG. And of course a cable for normal computers. The USB micro B connector on the Companion 1 is somewhat recessed, probably to give some mechanical support to the USB plug. That's a good practice, but it also means that not all third party micro USB cables will fit. A second micro USB connector used to charge the internal battery is not recessed, so any 5 volt micro USB charger can be used. Since most people already have several USB chargers, the Companion 1 comes without one. As always, jump to the timecode above to skip the tech. Heart of the system is the ESS Sabre 9018, a very popular DAC chip that has several incarnations. The K2M version used here does not have an integrated headphone amp but is with 127 dB dynamic range the quietest of the bunch. It also offers programmable filters. The amplification for the headphone is taken care of by an OPA1612 for IV conversion and the AD8397 op amp by analog devices as a power amp. Since I couldn't find a way to open the Companion 1 decently, I got the above information from the manufacturer's website. Measurements showed a very low noise and 2.72 volt output into 10 kOhm. I don't think you should use it with low efficiency headphones, but I haven't tested that. I did connect my AudioQuest Nighthawk and that played more than loud enough. About sound quality on headphones, I don't afford myself an opinion, as you know. For portable use, you could use the supplied short cables to hook up your smartphone or tablet. The Companion 1 is slightly larger and considerably thicker than an iPhone 6S. You could hold them together using a rubber band. Another option is to use the incorporated Wi-Fi. Just put the Companion 1 in Wi-Fi access point mode and have your smartphone, tablet or computer connect to it. On my iMac and iPhone I could choose the Companion 1 as an AirPlay station. This can be set up 
as a direct connection between the computer, tablet or smartphone and the companion one, or over the home network. This also means that you could hold the companion one in your pocket, connect it to your headphones or earplugs, but also to your stereo. Using Wi-Fi there is no loss in audio quality and it works up to 192 kHz and thus DSD64. Bluetooth is not supported, that would have compromised the audio quality. Given the options and the fact it's a portable device, it might be clear there is a steep learning curve. I couldn't get started without the manual. But at the other hand, once you get the rational behind it, it's all logical and easy to remember. The outputs are all on the top side, headphone out, line out and digital out. On the right side are the power button and the volume buttons. The power button has to be pressed until the indicator shaped like a wave starts blinking between red and green. The unit is now in USB mode. To switch to Wi-Fi mode you have to press the top button on the left side of the unit. The button below it lets you select between access point mode or client mode for Wi-Fi and the third button, button lowers the output by 6 dBs. Along the bottom are two micro USBs, the left one for power and the right one for audio. Only a number of years ago we would have paid twice the price for a stationary DAC that offered this sound quality. The battery's power supply provides a very clean DC voltage, also when the power supply is connected. And as I tell you time over time, a D to A converter does nothing more than shape the voltage from the power supply to the shape described by the bits coming in. If the voltage is polluted, so will be the analog audio and if the voltage is extremely clean, like here, the analog audio signal will be too. Add that to one of the best DAC chips applied with skill and you'll end up at a very good sounding DA converter. Not that it rivals the Mojo. The WTA filters are still unbeatable, but it doesn't make the companion one a bad converter, quite the opposite. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a, as good as you can get it when using the ESS9018 chip. The Celsus Audio Companion 1 is a fantastically designed device that offers very fine features for portable use. Everything is screaming quality and customer satisfaction. It comes in a luxury packing that is loaded with accessories. The large collection of cables including the unique short Apple Lightning to micro USB cable and a luxury leather pouch. The 6000 mAh battery should be good for 10 hours depending on your use. The unique Wi-Fi function lets you use it from your pocket while you operate your phone in your hand. What the penalty is on battery use I can't tell. For in-home use this has a function too. If you use your laptop to play music it's no longer necessary to place the laptop near your stereo if you want to play CD quality or higher. Just have the laptop connected to the companion one over Wi-Fi and you're set to go. I have already said that this review is about home use and not mobile use. Although I just mentioned one very nice home application playing over Wi-Fi, the real strong points do show up in portable use. That's what it's designed for and what it does best. I keep doing reviews, so if you want to stay informed, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there, but please view my questions video first. See the link in the top right corner. You'll find more information below this video in YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or in the, on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.